So for a while now, the 124th RTRs have been pretty stale in my opinion. We've been stuck with the same old re-releases, new body colors, upgraded electronics that are no better than what we started with, no upgraded motors or servos or anything like that, and definitely no new features. But FMS has stepped up once again with the FCX 24M. As you can see, we've got four new body styles. These things are loaded with features, great motors, servos, ESCs, all of the above. I am thrilled to finally be getting a new 24th platform. So let's take a dive into these things, check them out, see what FMS has brought to the 24th game. The more I look at these things, guys, the more hyped I get. Look at that. The licensed Land Rover Camel Trophy bodies on these. Crazy. Straight axles, two speed, full interior. Look at that. Four body styles we've got two of them here we're going to take them to the bench do a little deep dive into them then we're going to go run these things but look at these scale accessories all included what do we got a lot to talk about here all right first look it's just so cool to see this thing shrunk down to a true 24 scale size going from the fcx 24 here which everybody kind of agrees it's more of a 18th scale truck down to this it's just amazing. I love it. You know, right now everybody's going bigger, 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 goofy looking bodies and wheels and 1.3s and FMS says, check me out. I'm going the other way and I'm going to freaking dominate it. And this thing, oh, I'm so impressed. So one of the things I noticed right away getting this body off and taking a closer look at this, do these rails not look very familiar? Okay. SCX24 stock rails, the bolt holes for the skid, direct match right here. So that means we're going to be able to take any aftermarket SCX24 chassis rails and bolt them directly up to this skid and run basically this transmission and two speed in any aftermarket SCX24 rails. You'll see the shift servo, it's actually mounted with the transmission so right here it's just built in to part of the transmission the mount for it so there's no issue of figuring out where to mount this servo in any different rails if you take this transmission with it you've got a mount for the two-speed uh, shift servo and then you just got to figure out where you're going to put your esc and battery unbelievable this is going to lead to some very very custom builds with this truck so we do now share the same wheel nut and hex size as the SEX24, which means most of our 1.0 wheels should bolt over just fine. It's a little odd the sizing on their wheels and tires between the models. The Defender here has more of a 1.0 size wheel and tire, which measures about 26.4 across the face. And the Discovery, which measures more like 24.3 across the face. So it doesn't really bother me that we have two different sizes, but I just thought it was kind of interesting that they went with two different sizes. Now we're gonna pull this shock right here, take a quick look at it. So we do have an all new shock, obviously very shrunk down. They are very, very smooth. But what is interesting is they, they're all plastic here besides that looks like aluminum. And then on the inside, they just have like a drop of oil. There's not actual oil filled, um, but I can see that it's a little wet and they're super smooth. And then in the cap here, we have a rubber O-ring. I'm not going to oil fill these. I'm gonna leave them alone because they work very well as they are right now. Maybe over time, if they start to feel a little weak, we'll put a little more oil in there. But as you can see, they spring back very well. This is a stiffer spring rate on the rear than the front because obviously these bodies are heavy. So on the rear, we wanna keep it from sagging when we're adding all of these accessories and stuff. So there is a stiffer spring in the rear than what we have on the front. So we do have a bit of a mixture of screw sizes. A lot of these are 050 screws. These here in the skid and transmission and links Everything is 050. We have some Phillips screws in the drive shafts, which kind of stinks. And we have Phillips screws here for the body mounts. And then a couple up here on the bumper, which really don't matter. But the biggest part of these are 050. 
and then we have 1.5 on the shocks. So here's one of the first things that I absolutely hate about this. Um, to change out, say, your diff cover, you have to take out, you can't just take out these four screws. Like in the SCX24, you know, you can kind of just unbolt six screws and pull your diff cover. Here you have to take this screw out of your link because this is all one piece across the back, as you can see. Now we do got some pretty meaty looking shafts here. If that will come out, maybe that's one solid piece across the back, but um, it's pretty aggravating to have to take all of that apart just to get a diff cover off to change a gear or grease it or whatever. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but it doesn't make much sense to me. This is one solid shaft across there. Look at that. Wow. Okay, so we do have metal ring and pinion gear in there. So one thing that's very odd to me about this is I didn't pull any screws out of here that like hold the bearing in. You can see there's places for it, but there's not any in there. I don't know if that's just something they forgot, but you can actually just with the wheels off, move this entire axle. I mean, I took one wheel off of here and I could actually pull this entire axle out of there. So that's odd. It feels like you're going to get some left and right movement in there, but I guess with the hex on, it kind of stays in place, but it's just kind of odd to me that that entire axle has nothing that holds it in place. So when running these screws in, just run them in easily because every one of these has a little bit of threads on the screws there. So if you really try to tighten these down, you're just going to strip them out. So for the front axle, we've got a very nice built-in feature here. These are actually clockable and they are slightly clocked back out of the box but you have one hole of adjustment right here. So if you want to roll that back down, you could. That's unbelievable that, that that's built into the axle out of the box. We're just now kind of getting axles for the SCX24 that have that ability. And um, they've built it into these. So very nice that that is built in. I do wish they would have supported these axles, these outer portions of the axle here with a screw on both sides because as you can see right here, you can see daylight through that. It's getting, there's a crack right there. So hopefully we don't over time get more and more warping. On the front, I think the steering link will kind of keep it true, but I don't know about the rear. We could easily start to see these warp, in my opinion. Now maybe the axle shaft itself We'll kind of keep that straight because it's one solid piece across there. I don't know. We'll have to see. We do have some steering stoppers up front. Obviously, I'm probably going to cut those down a little bit and see if we can get just a little bit more steering. But I'm sure it's to kind of keep you from maxing out and destroying axles. These, um, let's pull one of these off because they look fairly beefy. So in the steering, we have 1.5 screws. Just kind of jump around a little bit keep you guessing that's good though because your steering takes a little more abuse the steering link is definitely a unique design you can see it's the bent style link and then it's kind of double sheared on the ends like i think i kind of like that so we do have some pretty meaty cvd style shafts on the front here I took this apart to here and this will not come out. So we would actually have to go even farther. I'm not going to go into it any farther at the moment, but if you're going to change this out, I don't know if this is one solid piece. I don't see how it really could be unless you have to take the joint apart. So a lot of people were hoping we could just swap out the ends on these axles with the FCX 24 and go straight axles on those and get rid of the portals but these are totally different. I don't see that really happening. Um, these are much smaller, much more narrow axle. So I just really don't think that any of this stuff is going to bolt up well together. 
So on the front, if you really tighten the wheel nut down, you'll get a little bit of binding. So you kind of have to do like you do with the SCX24 and don't just crank it down wide open, but that's not very tight. It's still fairly free, but it's not as free as this. That's why these felt like the wheel nuts were super loose out of the box. All right, we're gonna take a quick look at the transmission here. If you do just remove these four screws and it is loose. Now what is kind of crazy is the way the drive shafts go into this thing. So you can see the rear drive shaft is actually sitting a little bit lower, but one of the things that I do really like is the way that this servo bracket is built into this. So when you pull this transmission out, unlike the FCX24, you don't have to deal with connecting this rod for your shift servo. It all stays together. So we could very easily take this right here, pull it out, take this skid and bolt it into, like I said, an SCX24 chassis and then drop this right back in it so pretty simple um i love the fact that this is not separate now that was such a pain to try to get in here with the servo being mounted up here to the chassis on this you had to disconnect that when you pulled the transmission out and you guys know if you've took that apart it's kind of tight in there trying to get that connected back so very nice design with that I absolutely love that about it. Now, let's see what all we gotta do to get into this thing. One issue with having that on there is, obviously, when you go to pull the transmission apart, then you have to deal with it. But I would think I would rather have it that way. So I'm really trying to avoid pulling all these wires and stuff apart because I'm really ready to go run this, guys, but I wanted to take a look at it. This is all brand new. We gotta check it out, see what's inside here. And then we're gonna go run it. Wow, look at that, metal gears in here. Sweet. So we should be all metal gears inside of this thing. I'm not gonna go through the trouble to pull this other side, guys, to take a quick look at gears, but it is nice that we have these metal gears in here. And these look like the same sort of mod four gears, I believe that we had before. So we have an 11 tooth pinion in here. I'm not counting all those teeth, so I don't know what that is, but it is. it does have some grease in it and it's all metal gears in there. I'm not gonna pull the other side just to take a look at more gears, but I did wanna just kinda get a quick glance at it. I'm gonna throw this back together. We'll take a look at the size comparison of this versus some other bodies and SCX 24s, and then we're gonna go run it. For comparing full trucks, I want to get the body back on just to show you guys, but this is basically a C10 wheelbase, exactly, width and everything. So these axles are basically the same width as SCX24 axles. So this thing, having the two-speed built into it, is going to be giving the SCX24 a run for its money, no doubt cannot wait to see when the aftermarket kicks in on this thing let's get this body on we'll compare a couple more trucks and then we're going to go run these things all right so for size comparison i'm going to show you a bunch of stuff here even though these are basically scx24 size they just really are right down to it this is a custom scx24 build i did a long time ago you guys may know this one it's been sitting untouched for at least two years probably um almost exactly the same, all right? So the SCX24s, we're very close. Here's the Red Cat Ascent 18. As you can see, quite a bit longer. A little bit wider. <laughs> quite a bit wider. Okay. I already showed you the FCX24, but we'll take a quick look at it. Now the length, the wheelbase, and that's why I like, although I was saying this is very similar to a 24 as far as wheelbase goes, it's extra wide and the bodies were always big, but as far as the length of them, they were always pretty close. Now the width, 
with the portals, obviously much wider, you can see there. Crazy wide monster compared to this thing. This is a custom SEX build that we just did for Liam a while back with the MISO, uh, MISO, uh, the MISO, <laughs> MISO ISO axles on it. And again, larger tires, but wheelbase is not far off. Definitely wider with the setup we've got going there. And then you get in some of these 18s, obviously, much larger. The Rushmore here, boom, massive compared to this, right? <laughs> and TRX4M, but these are 18 scale. So just kind of giving you guys an idea when it comes to size. These things kind of dwarf those. So these are going to be really good for our uh, indoor courses. And just a lot of fun outdoors because I'm getting to where I really like sort of a less capable truck with a little more detail. It's just fun finding those lines that something like this can do. So instead of going out and just running over everything, um, you got to pick that line. So let's take these out and get some crawling in. We got some really good footage of us down in Tennessee around the Gatlinburg area running these, Liam and I. So uh, I'm going to throw all that in here and we'll just talk some more about them. So we got out trailing these down in the Gatlinburg area. This is Liam, he found this log, he wanted to drive across this log. And we ran into a little issue, it was kind of my fault. You'll see here, we've only got front wheel drive. Uh, apparently when I took the transmission apart, I removed two screws from the cover that goes to the gear that runs the rear drive shaft. Sounds kind of complicated, right? Um, it is kind of a weird design. I'm not a fan of it. It's the reason the rear drive shaft kind of sticks down so far, but you'll see here we were two wheel drive only. And it was actually because when I pulled the transmission out of this thing, I forgot and left the two screws out that kind of holds the cover on. And you'll see here, there's a pin that comes straight out of the transmission there. And there's like a little, or the shaft that comes out of the transmission. There's a small pin right here that goes through that. This, this pin is actually in the shaft there if you look hard. And this gear sits onto that. And then this little case with another gear in it is connected to your rear drive shaft. So a very odd design. I mean, I guess it works, but don't forget and leave those two screws out or you will be stranded. So we had a great time out trailing these down around Cataract Falls. If anybody's been there, there's some really cool crawling spots there, but um, these are going to need a little weight down low to really reach their full capability. Uh, they drove really good, but at times Liam was like, this thing won't go anywhere, just because if you tried to pull some really steep inclines, much steeper than this right here, they would just loop out. But overall, I mean, for a stock truck, they went very well. The tires seem to do pretty good, you know, and they've got a decent enough foam in them where they just, they actually worked. They didn't, the tires didn't just fold over from the weight up top. So we're running a hard body with these accessories on it, straight out of the box with an interior and everything. And you'll see the truck is still pretty capable. You'll see their high gear comes in handy a lot when it does kind of get hung up you just kick it in high and you're able to get up on up and over those obstacles like that right there one thing that really helped these trucks get along is the 050 motor in them they have enough power to do what they need to do unlike something like the sx24 where you just kind of stall them out a lot you get in a tight spot like this and you'll just kind of stall it out especially once you start to add a little bit of weight so once we start adding some weight to this Maybe we'll need to upgrade the motor, but I really feel like it's going to run it pretty well. Now, we'll be doing a full comparison between this and a newer SCX24 at some point, but I really feel like at this point in time, this is going to be the way to go. You know, these just having the two speed, especially if you're wanting to trail. Now, if you're wanting to go build a full custom, most capable crawler you can get, 
maybe you're still going to stick with the SEX platform just because there is so much aftermarket and stuff available already. But I think for these just coming out, they're really, really good. And the future is just going to be great for these things. The fact that they were able to get the two speed in here, but keep it in such a small, compact little package with the transmission is great because we're going to be able to take this two speed and throw it in some more custom tighter builds without any issue. You know, that was one thing with the FCX trying to take that big bulky kind of cumbersome two speed and put it into other things was a little bit challenging at times. Like I said, you had to figure out where you were, you were going to mount the shift servo and all of that. And so the way this one is set up, it's, it's really going to be easy to put this into another chassis. And I have plans to do that with uh, an SCX24 chassis that I have already. Not that these being a trail truck, they really need a performance chassis, but uh, I thought it would be interesting just to see how easy it is to bolt one of these over and keep the body. I would really like to keep these bodies just because um, it's one of the main reasons I'm going to buy this truck, in my opinion. I love the look of these bodies and um, everything just works so well on them. I think FMS did a great job with this release. I was a little worried about the servo and it's going to be hard to upgrade to a little bit stronger servo because most of them have a longer can on them and that's going to be tough to fit on this truck with the way the upper link riser is mounted at the back of the servo. So upgrading servos is going to be a little tough but I never felt like I needed it. Went out trailing with this, I never stalled the servo out. As you can see there it did just fine across the bridge and honestly I wouldn't even worry about changing this servo until it dies or something happens. But, um, you know, that was one thing I was concerned with, but I had zero issues with. And as you'll see here, being a little more true to the 124th scale or maybe 120, I don't know, but being a little bit smaller, they really fit our indoor courses very well. And I haven't enjoyed driving anything on this indoor course as much as this little truck in a while. I do have the Defender version as well that we didn't get as much running in with because, like I said, we ran into the issue as soon as we got out on the trail with it going into front wheel drive. That was my fault, but uh, I will get more running in with that as well. And I will have a full running video of these just running because I know this video is getting very long with the deep dive sort of breakdown of this truck but it is a new platform that i wanted to check out well these are going to be about a 30 day pre-order i've been told they will ship around july 7th to 10th and they are priced really well in my opinion they're 119 if you purchase one 109 if you purchase two to three and 99 bucks if you purchase all four of them so um, a great price out of the gate at 119 even if you just buy one that's that's a really good price for what you're getting here the two speed good electronics this thing's got a really good slow crawl really good steering servo and like i said the two speed and not to mention the scale hard body with the accessories lights everything that comes with this i mean it's just a spectacular deal in my opinion so check it out guys i will link these in the description let me know what you think about them I'm overall, I'm very impressed with these things. And at this point, to me, this is the absolute best 124th RTR that you can pick up. I mean, obviously, like I said, it's a little more trail based, but these are a very good platform and they're really going to take off very soon, in my opinion. So let me know what you think about them. I'm having a blast with them. Lots more to come, including more of a comparison with like the SCX24 and just lots of running, period. As you can probably also tell right there, the Velcro on the front of this body is very strong. So it's on a hinge in the rear and a Velcro strap in the front. And this body never once moved or budged at all. So everything about this truck is just very impressive straight out of the gate. There's a couple things like that rear drive shaft setup that's a little odd. And it's going to take a little bit of adjustment to get a bigger servo on here. But besides that, I am very impressed with these little trucks. And they are very capable for what they are. You guys let me know what you think, and I appreciate you watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, click the bell. Peace. <laughs>